to parliamentarians from around the world in attendance, virtually or in person, at Copenhagen 2021, respectful good wishes and greetings. My name is Charles Chauvel. For seven years I served as an elected member of the House of Representatives of the Parliament of New Zealand. And since 2013, I've been working with the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, advising on good practice to strengthen the inclusiveness and effectiveness of parliamentary governance in some 65 partner countries around the world. Honourable Members, inclusion matters for a host of reasons. Inclusive societies tend to deliver more sustainable human development outcomes because every member of the society understands that they have a valued contribution to make and that no one should be left behind. Inclusive governance implies equal respect for the human rights of all. And inclusiveness is a key precondition for building and sustaining peace, harmony and societal inclusion. Inclusive societies are more just, more equal and more prosperous. LGBTI people in every country and development context have been denied societal inclusion and respect for their human rights. We're all poorer as a result. Increasingly over recent years, parliamentarians like you all over the world are being asked to take action to remedy the effects of this denial. And when you do, you frequently face hostile, organised and highly emotive reactions from those in your societies who do not support LGBTI inclusion. Many parliamentarians finding themselves in this situation have reached out for advice, support, assistance and resources, but these have not always been readily available. This is why in 2017 UNDP and Parliamentarians for Global Action PGA, produced a Parliamentarian's Handbook on LGBTI Inclusion and Human Rights. The handbook was written specifically by experts on parliamentary procedure, gender, governance and inclusion, and it was written for parliamentarians. It brought together in one place practical resources on how to use the unique power and authority of Parliament to promote inclusion and respect for the rights of LGBTI people. It contains advice and success stories on framing laws, shaping legal and policy frameworks, promoting education and leading and supporting political campaigns to encourage inclusion, equality and respect for MPs LGBTI constituents. Over the past four years, UNDP and PGA have used the handbook to support MPs like you who, regardless of your own sexual orientation, gender identity or sex characteristics, are working to advance the rights and inclusion of LGBTI people in your constituencies. I had the honour to be invited by the Speaker of the Parliament of the Cook Islands to facilitate workshops in December 2019 for members of that Parliament. The two workshops, one for all MPs and the other for members of a special committee considering a bill to repeal the colonial era sodomy law drew heavily on the content of the handbook and were designed to provide practical information, advice, support, myth busting and examples of international good practice to the MPs in attendance. Versions of these workshops have been held all over the world on a sub-national, national, regional and international basis to promote knowledge exchange between parliamentarians and often including civil society, media, the private sector and government officials. Demand for the handbook has been such that we've already had it translated from its original English version into eight other languages, Chinese, French, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, Thai, Turkish and Vietnamese. Honourable Members, the challenges facing LGBTI people around the world and their allies working to promote respect for their human rights and inclusion remain very significant. Completely unacceptable levels of violence, abuse and stigma in many cases remain institutionalised in the laws and policies of nations. But at the same time, phenomenal progress is being made, often through parliamentary action. The parliaments of Bhutan, 
Gabon and Angola have all decriminalised same-sex activity in the past two years. 28 member states of the United Nations have now legislated for marriage equality, with the national parliaments of Australia, Germany, Malta and Finland all having passed the necessary enabling legislation over the past four years. At least four member states of the United Nations have banned the harmful practice of so-called conversion therapy, legislation to protect children and young people from this insidious form of abuse is now under positive consideration by national parliaments or has already been enacted by sub-national legislatures in at least 11 more countries. To reflect major advances like these since UNDP and PGA produced the first edition of the handbook and to respond to new and increasing demand, it is now being revised, updated and relaunched. And in recognition of the new COVID reality of virtual and hybrid interactions, as well as in-person ones, we're producing a toolkit to be used as the basis for further expert facilitated workshops for MPs on the contents of the handbook. Honourable Members, I want to conclude my remarks to you today with two key messages. The first one is that you're not alone in your work to promote LGBTI rights and inclusion. Next month, you'll be able to find and download the new handbook and the toolkit on both the UNDP and PGA websites. The PGA website also includes an excellent and detailed section and set of resources that you can use in this area. If it would help to have a former or serving parliamentarian or other expert facilitator come to do a workshop for your parliament, media, private sector or civil society on how to build the alliances and make the arguments for change in this area, please do contact PGA or UNDP. We will work with you and the networks for and of MPs that now exist around the world to make it happen. And now, if I may, I'd like to conclude with my second uh, key and very personal message on how rapidly positive and inclusive change can take place through parliamentary action. I grew up in a very small conservative rural farming town in New Zealand in the 1970s and 1980s. Matters of sexual orientation, sex characteristics and gender identity were not discussed except in terms of slurs, stereotypes and insults against and about LGBTI people. Those few who lived their lives openly were ostracised and frequently exposed to blackmail and extreme levels of physical violence. Sexual activity between men was punishable by up to 14 years in prison. But in 1985, a backbench member of parliament introduced a bill to repeal that law. The legislation never achieved majority popular support, but a coalition of MPs and civil society nonetheless built the numbers in Parliament necessary for it to pass, admittedly by a very narrow majority, the following year. Last month was the 35th anniversary of the passage of that legislation, and over that time there's been a massive shift in social attitudes in the country, spurred on in part by the initial reform of the law in 1986 and the debate that accompanied it. In 1993, Parliament banned discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. In 1999, the first transgender woman was elected to Parliament, remarkably to represent a conservative rural constituency. In 2005, Parliament legislated to allow civil unions between couples of the same sex or gender identity. In 2013, Parliament enacted a marriage equality law. And last week, a bill was introduced to criminalise so-called conversion therapy. This was celebrated by the LGBTI community and their allies in a special committee room in Parliament House, the Rainbow Room, which memorialises all of this progress as well as my fellow LGBTI MPs who've served in the Parliament of New Zealand. Honourable Members, you can make real change and sometimes quite rapid change to the quality of life, dignity, respect and rights 
of your LGBTI constituents, and in doing so, you will enrich all of society through greater inclusion. I know this because I've lived it. I and my colleagues at UNDP and PGA stand ready to work with you using the new edition of the toolkit and the handbook to lead, support and be the change that LGBTI people require.